And welcome back in a pattern for years. Farmers have been at war with beavers who would cause issues with their water flow. That dang beaver. I feel like you've dealt with that, the way you kind of said that. Uh, but now some are seeing beavers, beavers less as enemies and more as allies, especially with our changing climate. Good. Dr. Emily Fairfax from the California State University Channel Islands Environmental Science and Resource Management Program is joining us now to talk all yeah. things beavers. So, you know, thank you for being with us, first off. I always want to say that uh, and spending you know, some time with us. But the biggest reason beavers can become a nuisance is because they, they build these dams in areas that you don't want them. But why are beavers building dams to begin with? That's a great question. Beavers build their dams because they need to have water to be safe. Beavers on the land are extremely awkward. Any predator can easily pick them off. But once they're in the water, it's like otters or seals, like they own that environment. So building the dam is really just about making a safe home for themselves. I wouldn't mess with a beaver. That tail can get you. Whack they yeah. whack that tail pretty good there. <laughs> All right. So dams actually, though, though they can be a nuisance because they block the water and it can flood areas. I I'm assuming at some times that's actually a good thing. Yeah, that flooding is really key for storing water that you can then access during dry periods. So every time there's a lot of rain or a lot of snow melt, that dam slows it down, creates a big pond, lets it seep out into the soil. And then when you have a drought, it keeps the plants green. And then when you have a fire, those green plants are a lot harder to burn. Yeah. I mean, how does it work, though? Because I know water and the resource is so precious in general, and there's so many water rights. Like, oh, we're, we need this water downstream. So if a beaver dams something up, when it comes to, like, interacting with humans and politics, are we allowed to just keep that or do we have to eliminate it because there are certain rules that they got to play by? At least right now you can just keep it. And in some ways it's kind of like free water. Yeah. Um, but these dams really, they're just slowing it down. They're not stopping it. So those downstream water rights owners, they're going to get their water. It just might come in June instead of in May. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about that and the government entities, because they're actually trying to lure beavers into building in specific areas. So how do they actually do that? I mean, how does a beaver, do ah, I don't it? like this area, oh, right. you know, how, what if they don't want to stick around? Yeah, it's state by state. So in some states you can go move them. So if there's a beaver causing a conflict with a landowner, you can go live trap it and put it somewhere else. Okay. Um, in some states, it's not an option. So you would build what's called a beaver dam analog, which is a fake human-made beaver dam, um, to try to encourage uh, beavers that are going off to find their new homes to stop and fix it for you because a beaver sees that and it's like, this is horrible. I'm, I can make this a better dam. And then it's more likely to stay in that spot. That's amazing. Let me fix this for you. Okay, you're trying here, but let, me, let the pros really work at it. And they yeah. are probably. They would oh, build yeah. it way better. I know at one point beaver pelts were highly sought after, right, in the trapping community. Mm -hmm. Has that changed, and how's the population doing now? Yeah, pelts are really not that valuable anymore. Usually, if there is trapping, it's about conflict management, not fur gathering. Mm -hmm. um, there used to be 100 to 400 million beavers in North America. Today, we're looking at 10 to 40 million, so still only about 10 percent their historic population. How mm -hmm. are, have they been affected by the changing climate, beavers? <laughs> Um, they're pretty resilient to it. Like they can move into a desert and make it a wetland. They are great at making environments suit them. Um, but they do have some issues too. Like they're moving north towards the Arctic because it's turning into a more shrubby environment and they love that. And then we have to figure out like, uh oh, this is new. Like, do we deal with it? Do we do something? Um, they're resilient, but they're not imp impervious to climate change. So um, let's just say, for instance, someone's watching and maybe they have a beaver problem that they don't want to deal with. Can you call like some local officials and have them transplant it and maybe one of these that areas it, that right? need it? Yeah, some places you can. So in South Dakota, Wyoming, Colorado, beaver relocation is pretty common. And there are websites where you can Google, like, what do I do with this beaver? It's a problem. And find names and organizations that'll come do all of that for you. Um, California, you can't do that yet. Uh, so state by state, it's going to vary. But uh -huh. In general, like, yeah, you just call someone up and say, help, I have a beaver I need help with. Right. <laughs> Those little creatures. I've seen, like, two in my life, and they're so cool to see. Yeah. Just floating around, big old never... tails. Yeah, and they're huge. Like, a lot of people don't realize this is a 40 to 100-pound rodent. What? Like, this is not... Well, they yeah, can right? This is not pounds? muskrat size. Like, these are big. A <laughs> 100 pounds? I, yeah, I'm shocked yeah. by that too. But All right. Dr. Emily Fairfax from California State University Channel Islands Environmental Science and Resource Management Program. Thank you Appreciate so your time. much. So knowledgeable. I'm a beaver fan.